Okay, well, with the Pope uh, stepping down, kind of the papacies in the news, I figure this would be a good time as any to do this video. Had this, for whatever reason, on the back burner in my mind for like the past, oh, it has to have been a year. Now, if you watch my videos against the Arians and Jehovah's Witnesses, you will see that I very frequently will reference uh, this letter from Dionysius of Rome uh, to Dionysius of Alexandria. And he's writing about the concept of Jesus being a, a creature made with hands. And I will frequently say, point out that before Nicaea, the the Greek word for create had a wider semantic range, and that the Arians narrowed the semantic range. You know, and, and here I would point out. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see here. It says it. Ah, uh, here it is. For the sense of he created, as you know is not one, and we must understand he created in this place as he set the works, set over the works made by him, that is made by the Son himself. And he created must not be taken for made, for creating differs from, make, from making. Um, now there, and he points out, he's like, and in many passages of the divine oracles, it said that the Son has been generated, but nowhere to have come into being. So, Dionysius is pointing out, you know, and this is something that Dionysius of Alexandria already knows, that, you know, there's more than one way to understand the Greek word for create. And just because it is said that Jesus was created, it didn't mean that he once did not exist and is a creature made with hands. Very money quote. Now, I, what I started thinking about with this, though, and this is what I want to address today, um, here's Dionysius talking about the concept of Jesus being a creature. Equally, one must censure those who hold the Son to be a work and consider that the Lord has come into being as one of the things which really came to be, whereas the divine oracles witnessed a generation suitable to him in becoming, but not any fashioning or making. Here we go. A blasphemy then it is, not ordinary, but even the highest, to say that the Lord is in any sort a handiwork. So here's Dionysius. A blasphemy then it is, not ordinary, but even the highest, to say that the Lord is in any sort, in any way, a handiwork, a creature. Now here's my, here's what I want to hit home. You know, Roman Catholics have the idea that if the Pope speaks on something, then, hey, it's settled. In a quote falsely attributed to St. Augustine, Roma locuta est, causa finita est. Rome has spoken, the matter is settled. Never mind that St. Augustine didn't say that, and he certainly didn't mean it with his theology. It's just falsely attributed to him by... Catholic hack apologists like Carl Keating. But anyway, you have this, the Pope's, you know, the Bishop of Rome saying that this is a blasphemy to say that the Lord is in any sort a handiwork. I guess my question would be then, if, if, this, if this concept of the Bishop of Rome speaking on a doctrinal issue goes all the way back to St. Peter, and speaking on the issue and settling it, why did Nicaea even have to happen? Why did not Athanasius, because keep in mind, this, this letter arrived to the Bishop of Alexandria. So Alexander and Athanasius could have just waved this in the air and said, hey, 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 we don't, we don't even need to discuss this. Bishop of Rome, the Vicar of Christ, spoke on this. And uh, so let's just lay this matter to rest. They had a perfect opportunity to do so, and frankly, they didn't. Um, that silence kind of has me wondering 
if that concept did indeed exist in the 4th century church. I don't know, just my two cents worth. Uh, do drop a comment.